Yeah, so my name is Raquel Noboa. I'm originally from Spain, from a city called Salamanca. Um, I moved to Ireland when I was 17 years old and my initial goal was um, to learn English a little bit. I had no English at the time. Um, and also, I guess, to to try and find myself, as they call it, um, <laughs> when you're young, and to really try and find out what was my, my right path on life, because I wasn't really a person that wanted to go to college. And this was I guess a big shock to my family or my family are academics and so at 17 my father bought me a one-way ticket to whatever I wanted to go and I landed by pure chance in Shannon in County Clare and that's how kind of my Irish journey started. Um, I fell into a career in hospitality by pure chance again you know I had no English so all I could do was clean bedrooms for my first year in Ireland until I started mastering the language a little bit and then I really really loved um, hospitality because to me I found that place in the world where I could learn by doing I could learn by watching other people doing their jobs and it really gave me an opportunity to improve and upskill myself over the years um, so within four years of getting here, I had become a, a hotel manager. I had gone through hotel management and I pretty much dedicated the rest of my life to hospitality up until 2017 um, when I decided to find my, find my own business. Yeah, in 2012, um, I was still working as a hospitality manager and my general manager challenged me with the concept of green hotels. He decided he wanted to run the greenest hotel in Ireland and I was the best person to appoint for the job, apart from all my other titles that I already had. So I really had no idea, having worked in the industry for about 18 years, I had no idea what the concept of sustainability or green hotels are. I had suffered from eco-anxiety myself since 2004 because I was working in the Maldives when the tsunami came in Boxing Day and hit our island. And since then, I guess I was very, very aware of what nature can do to humans in a split second. But I always had viewed climate change and sustainability as something that was such a large pro problem that somebody little like me wouldn't really have any part to play on that fight that that was something scientists and governments would do um and so when he brought this concept to me i really had not really not a clue how to start so i started reading a lot of articles about climate change carbon emissions about what a green business did and i realized that it's simply you know a green business it's one that reduces its impact on the environment and then when I brought it back to, to the hotel, then I realized that we were impacting the environment in many ways. But three things I could concentrate on were waste, water and energy. And reducing those three things will reduce our impact on the environment. So I started applying really, really small things that I thought might work. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, so it took me about two years to create a green program. But within those two years, we had reduced our energy use by 30 percent or waste by 40% and our water by 25%. And that was kind of a light bulb moment for me when I started thinking, why stop here? You know, if we can do this with no investment at all, just with training of our team, why can't I teach other hotel managers to do the same? And the idea started forming of my head to, to create a, a, a training company, an educational company. And it took me another couple of years to take the plunge. You know, it's very cushy to have my, I had a good salary. I had, had a good job. I loved what I did. Um, so it wasn't easy to, to move on to being a business owner. And this was the first time I was a business owner. So it was a scary, but in 2017, I finally decided to do it. I founded Fifty Shades Greener um, as an environmental educational company for the hospitality sector. Now, the company has evolved over the last four years um, in a huge way, particularly since 2019. In 2019, I decided I was serving customers in Ireland, you know, driving around, which is not very environmentally friendly and providing training to, to hotel teams. Um, in 2019, I decided that I wanted to do this all over the world and that the only way I could do that was by becoming an online educational company. 
And so I spent all that year um, really not working and just developing my online programs. Um, so Fifty Shades Greener right now, it's involved in education, the hospitality industry, how to run greener businesses by reducing their carbon emissions. But we've also developed into an educational company for primary school, secondary school and third level education. Um, and that's where we're at at the moment, um, good or bad. We are already have a national contract in Ireland. We're working with MCI to, to green all the hotels in Glasgow for COP26 this November. We are um, just about to sign a contract in Spain and we've opened our um, Middle East branch only last month. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard way to define excellence because I think excellence means different things to different people. Um, but to me, it's, it's excellence. It's, it's attached to my own core values as a person. And one of my values, I guess, is the people around me. And how do I make the people around me feel? And for me, in business, that means my team, my customers. But it also includes, as a personal level, my family and friends. Um, and I guess what I would consider excellence would be exceeding those people's expectations, exceeding my team's expectations of myself, exceeding my clients' expectations of myself and even my friends and family. Yeah, so key reasons for businesses to become environmentally friendly or green or sustainable um but to me the first one one the first key reason for me would be climate change and the fact that there is this ominous problem ahead of us if we don't change the way that we do things at the moment um but other reasons that people may not sometimes see from the outset for me the first one is that there is this perception that running a green business is going to cost you more money when in fact if you do it efficiently running a green business is going to save you money every single one of my customers saves money after implementing our program and so you know whether to me the key reason for adopting these changes should be because you want to do your best for climate change the reason why most of our customers engage with this process is because it's going to save them money whatever the reason that's it's okay as long as they engage with the process and become more environmentally conscious other key reasons to me is that society has changed society is telling us this is what they want to see in the corporate world from governments at all levels, society in general wants to see a greener future. You know, we can't forget that, you know, the children of today are going to be our customers of tomorrow. And they've been striking for over a year about climate change for every single Friday. And they've created this huge movement of the Fridays for future. And so, you know, I think any company that ignores that, you know, it's going to be in trouble when these kids become, you know, the adults of society. Other key reasons for me is also that it actually a green program and, a, and an ethical business can actually improve, improve staff retention. It can increase um, teamwork within your own team. It can create that camaraderie and that that working for for a common goal. Um, that it's very much underestimated, has been under underestimated for years, but particularly like in the hospitality industry, you know, we're seeing a huge problem now with with the reopenings of staff retention. A lot of staff have moved on to many other different types of jobs, um, like retail, for example, because they had worked during during the recent closures. Um, but having a green team, and this is feedback I'm hearing more from my customers, having a green team and having that green ethos really get that you know core of young people that are needed for the hospitality industry to really get back into into, into loving this industry which is amazing um but it has had a bad reputation for for perhaps a few years now so i would say climate change number one cost savings number two you know this kind of the way society will view your business with more trust um for what you're doing and then how your own team views the business um, and, and the ethos and how how hard they're going to work for you if, if, if you give them really that that motivation and that passion to do something they want to do. That's a, a really good question that I love answering because 
greenwashing and you know ticking boxes just to fit the sustainability box it's uh, happening more and more there was a report by the EU only a couple of weeks ago 42 percent of companies actually are greenwashing and that's a very scary statistic to me it all comes to you know you can never say you're a green business unless you're measuring your environmental impact so I even meet people that are already maybe they think they're, you know, they're, they're advanced on the green journey because they have made some changes, right? They may have changed, you know, single use plastics or they may have, you know, changed to biodegradables and stuff like that. But unless you have initially measured your current position, what's your current environmental impact? What are your monthly carbon emissions? What is your carbon emissions per customer or per product that you sell? Unless you've done that exercise, you can never prove in the future that you have actually reduced your environmental impact. So to me, as a customer, you know, when I'm looking for services or when I'm looking for products, I always check their websites. Because if you're doing, if you're running a green business, you're proud of it and you're going to have it on your website, on your social media channels, all the ways you use to communicate with your customers. If I see an environmental policy that is not dated, um, you know, and nothing else. I know that's a tick box, you know, it's like, okay, they wrote a document or they got a consultant to write a document and they just tick the box, you know, show me what, what was your environmental impact when you started? What was your carbon emissions per customer or per, per product? And what are they now? And what are your plans for the future? That's a really easy way to identify the greenwashing from the actual businesses that are really doing something about it. Um, and that's why, you know, one of the unique things that we do all the time is we concentrate on measuring, measuring, measuring impact all the time, every single month, monitoring and reporting on your impact every single month so that you can really say with certainty you are doing better. You are reducing your impact on the environment. Um, and I just hope a lot of more companies kind of start doing that. And there is a lot more clarity even from from our own governments and from our own, you know, public agencies, there needs to be a lot more clarity as to what is acceptable or not acceptable in terms of carbon emissions and pollution. To measure success, first of all, we need to define success. And again, a little bit like with the question about excellence, you know, success means so many different things to many different people. You can, you can outline what your own success looks like. To me, success would mean to be able to serve and educate students from all over the world, you know, and create this carbon conscious society that I dream of in the future. And so, you know, for me, it's not really the success of my business is not in its bank account. It is in the number of learners that we're teaching. Um, so it becomes very easy to measure because you're 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 measuring numbers <laughs> and so it's it's not um it's not a difficult one to achieve um to measure like i have my goals as to how many students i want to be able to educate this year next year the following year um and in how many different countries they are so that's how i would measure the success of what i'm doing regardless whether that means you know the bank account is bigger or is smaller um, but success to me also means, um, you know, to have, again, a really engaged and thriving team of people. So, you know, that I can bring a person from, you know, starting with me maybe in an administration role to become a, a TED talker, you know, in the next 10 years that I have facilitated for my team to upskill themselves and become better than, you know, more knowledgeable than me, better than me, maybe run their own businesses, you know, because, um, I again, it's all about people. For me, success and excellence is just all about people. Um, and so if you can have thousands or millions of students that are learning from your courses and you can have a few hundred employees that successfully create their own business because they have worked with you, that's that's the definition of success. For me. <laughs> I used to say before I wanted green world domination. Um, I wanted to become the educational company in the world for environmental education. Um, I've started to realize in the last year that it's not necessarily 
me or Fifty Shades Greener that needs to do that. I've realized that, you know, where we want to go is to advocate and to um, to make sure environmental education is embedded into our curriculums from nursery to primary school, secondary school, third level education, because my dream is to create that carbon conscious society where I don't have to teach adults anymore how to be green managers of the industries. I don't need to teach people how to measure their carbon emissions when they're in their 40s or their 50s because they know how to do this. This comes second nature to us because they've been embedded it into our psyche since we're children. And so, yeah, is to have a car that, that that's that's the goal that I want to get to, um, to 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 create a carbon conscious society that cares for number one priority is to care for the planet that we live in um, and to leave that planet as unspoiled as possible for the next generations. And to get there, I just have to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, entering new markets, you know, talking to governments, trying to speak to policymakers um, and trying to start to become, you know, that climate activism movement that has started in many other parts of the world. 